Today I was thinking about writing a Facebook post and I kind of started writing and I was like, eh, that's not really that good. And I started typing up in Word and I got a three page long thing I want to read to you, talk to you guys about today. And it's my thoughts on Lent. As many of you guys may know, right now it is the Lenten season. What Lent is, for those of you guys who don't know, it's the time between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday, which is kind of, it's in the Christian calendar, it's a celebration of the cru Jesus crucifixion and his journey towards the cross and that sacrifice. And it's something that's kind of, I don't want to say divided in the church, just not universally celebrated in the Christian church. I kind of wrote this out. I'm going to try to like not read the whole thing for you guys because that'd be warm, but I'm just going to kind of go through it and do it. Because I've gotten a lot of questions about some of my friends. I've, I've told them, I was like, hey, like I'm practicing, like I am gave up Netflix for Lent, came in the conversation. Why are you practicing Lent? Isn't that Catholic? And other stuff like that. And I just kind of want to go out and say my thoughts on Lent. So let you all see. So first of all, Lent is a Christian holiday. It is part of the Christian calendar, which if you don't know, Google the Christian calendar. It talks about the different seasons of Lent. There's, you know, it goes Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, Pentecost, and then Ordinary Time. It's kind of like the way they go through the whole year, focusing on different aspects of the Bible and different aspects of Christianity. Well, Lent is about 40 days from Ash Wednesday to Easter, I think. It excludes Sunday, so it's 40 days. And the Lenten season is where we look at Christ's crucifixion and the suffering and death he participated in for us. So it's looking at the crucifixion and reminding us of why Christ was crucified and helping us remember the bigger implications of that and how it's important for us. Because it helps us renew our repentance and know that, you know, that's why we're saved is because Jesus died on the cross. It's not because of anything else, because he died on the cross. It helps us to see that. And it's also seen as a parallel to Jesus' fasting in the desert, which if you know about that, one of the first things Jesus does in the Gospels is goes into the wilderness for 40 days and fasts. That's where he's tempted by the devil. And then he comes back and is baptized and then starts his ministry. And so a lot of Christians see it as a parallel between that and see baptism as Easter and kind of like going into ministry. But a lot of people get confused and they think, well, Lent's only a Catholic thing. It's not. See, Lent has been practiced since as early as the 2nd century, like the 200s, I think, 100s and 200s. And people did that as a parallel to Christ's 40 days of fasting before Easter. And people started doing that and practicing that and giving something up and focusing more on God. People think it's Catholic because the Catholic Church practices it most devoutly, which they do. And I think I saw a number a couple weeks ago, like 70% of Catholics practice Lent, while like it's like 20% of Protestants. It's not entirely Catholic, but Catholics do practice it more. The thing with Lent is that the reason we think it's Catholic is because in the Protestant Reformation, when Martin Luther, when the Lutheran Church broke away from the Catholic Church, the Protestants had this reaction of where they went, if it's Catholic, we're not going to do it. In fact, they gave up a lot of practices because it was Catholic, and we kind of feel that same way today, or like if the Catholic Church does it, it's not Christian, we can't do it. But in the fact, Catholic Church has a lot of practices and traditions that are helpful and useful for us as Christians, and Lent being one of those. So it's something that I think as Christians we need to educate ourselves on. I knew what Lent was, but I didn't really understand like what it was or how it worked when I was in high school, because I had a couple friends who were Catholic who did it, but it was never really explained to me until I got to college. And at college, my Christian college, Milligan, I got began to understand what it was, and I had a professor who practiced Lent, other friends who did, and I kind of began to understand it, and they began to describe it to me and talk about it more than just it was. So the first year I gave it up, gave up something for Lent, I gave up social media, which was, that was a really good year for me. I learned a lot, and kind of like, it helped me just not to, you know, spend time on my phone all the time. Uh, this year, I gave up Netflix, which has actually been really freeing because it's allowed me more time to do other things, which... I didn't think, you know, Netflix was plugging up my life so much, but it turns out that I actually spent a lot of time on Netflix and I didn't realize it. And like, now I feel like I have a lot more free time and like stuff time to do other things that are important to me, like playing music or writing and stuff like that, which I didn't really realize. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize it was taking up so much of my time because I was kind of mindlessly, you know, turn on Netflix when, you know, you're sitting at home or doing stuff. So having that freedom has been really great. And it's also given me a good discipline of kind of just not just turning on Netflix to do it. So that's been good. But yeah, but the biggest pushback I get for practicing Lent is from people is like, well, I couldn't do that. I don't have the self-control to do that. That's one of the points of Lent. And I began to realize that talking to some friends about it, and they're like, oh, I couldn't give up something for 40 days. And I was talking about like Netflix or social media, and they're like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that for 40 days. And I think, you know, that's one thing I think that is beneficial is that when you talk about the fruit of the spirit, and one of them is self-control. And, but we live in a culture where self-control isn't practiced and not really preached. And I think Lent is one of those ways we can push back against the culture and practice for ourselves. How can I practice self-control? How can I say no to the things I want for something bigger? Because, like, self-control, we realize that, you know, as a kid, kids don't have self-control. If they have free reign over the kitchen, they're going to eat all the junk food they can. 
As you get older, you gain self-control and you think, you know what, no, I don't need to eat that, I need to eat this. And I think we need to practice more self-control in our lives because we live in a, I want it now and I want a lot of it, society. So having a way where we can say no, like Lent, where you can say, no, I'm gonna give up that for Lent. Like I know people who give up like sweets or sugar, or chocolate, coffee, soda, that kind of stuff, and they give it up and they say no. And the beauty of it is saying no to something good because Part of the reasoning behind this is that when Jesus made a sacrifice for us, he was saying no to his will and what he wanted, and he submitted to the will of the fathers. And this allows us to engage in that story and participate in that. And you know, whenever we're faced with this situation where it's like, I'm like, okay, it's nighttime, well, I'll watch Netflix, I'm like, no, I'm not. And it allows me to remember that I gave up Netflix for Lent, and I gave it up because Jesus died on the cross for me. And it kind of helps us get in that mindset of that. And the big thing I think about Lent that why we should practice it is that it helps us look forward to Easter and in the sense of like you know self-control practicing that and that's a good discipline but it also helps us look forward to Easter because when you've gone without Netflix for 40 days like it's been about two weeks now I think into Lent and it hasn't really affected me I haven't had with like you know withdrawals I haven't been missing it really there's a couple times you know I missed it but for the most part my life's gone on I've not really struggled to get over it I know some people like give up like sweets or food like that like stuff like that they struggle a more because it's more of a temptation. But the thing with the Lent, it gives us something to look forward to with Easter. Because a lot of Christians, we just go Sunday to Sunday, and then when Easter comes around, oh yeah, it's Easter, woohoo! There's no anticipation there. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And like that's why we have the Lent and Advent seasons. It helps us look forward and anticipate it and get ready for the bigger event. And the way I started talking to people about this is like a wedding. And over the last couple of years, I've been able to participate in some of my friends' weddings and go to it. And now, you never see a bride prepare for her wedding the day before. When people get engaged and are engaged to be married, there's an anticipation there. And every day is one day closer to the wedding day. And the wedding day is the big day. And they're preparing for it. Emotionally, getting ready for it. Physically, you know, couples work out, try to get in shape. People are doing counseling, getting ready, getting the wedding stuff ready. But they're preparing for it. They're anticipating it. And that's what Lent is. Lent is an anticipation of Easter. And looking forward to it and spending time and thought thinking, this is what happened on Good Friday. And this is what's going to happen on Easter Sunday. And looking forward to that and anticipating it. And ever since I've started practicing Lent, I've realized Easter's been such a bigger holiday. Not because Easter's gotten bigger, but because Lent's gotten bigger, I'm able to see Easter in the bigger picture and appreciate Easter more. And being able to see that, you know, this is all stuff Jesus had to go through to get to Easter. Because a lot of times we have Good Friday, Easter Sunday, and that's it. But if we have Lent, we're the whole time looking at it and going through it slowly and anticipating, and the anticipation builds and builds and builds. That's something beautiful I've seen. And that it gets you more and more excited for Easter every day it comes, because every day is like, oh man, it's one day closer to Easter. And right now I like playing the East, the Good Friday and Easter services at our church, and I'm getting excited for them, partly because I'm practicing Lent and exciting for them, but also it's like, then at Easter it's the big reveal, you know? It's the wedding day. And like there's an, an excitement in the engagement period each day you get closer and closer to the wedding. But people would tell you they never want to stay in that. It's, it's it's an exciting time, but they're waiting for the wedding day. And that's what Easter is for us. It's a wedding day when, when God said, your sins are forgiven now. My son is the atoning sacrifice for all. Go and celebrate. And I think 2,000 years later, it's something worth celebrating. And we can't just celebrate it the day of and get there, show up, and then just, you know, like a birthday party, show up and celebrate. We need to look forward to it and anticipate it. And it helps us see, you know, we're able to draw close because we're remembering Jesus' sacrifice and how we are unable. It's been really powerful how, you know, we forget that he did this for us. And it's our sins he's worried on that cross. And we forget that a lot. And we forget, you know, all the stuff that I've done in my life was the reason he was up on that cross and I need to remember that it's his death that saved us and his sacrifice crucifixion is the reason we're here and we forget about that because a lot of times we skip over Good Friday to get to Easter Sunday and I think Lent helps us remember that happened on Good Friday and it also helps us remember the journey of the cross because it wasn't an easy walk it was a hard journey the road to the cross when Jesus knew I'm going into Jerusalem they're gonna kill me I mean that's a hard walk to do and then he carries the cross and each step he's carrying the cross he's remembering us he's thinking of us and our sins and he's thinking I'm doing this for Tyler, I'm doing this for my brothers and sisters. I'm doing this for the sons and daughters of God. And see, Easter Sunday is nothing without Good Friday. And I think Lent allows us to remember and celebrate Easter Sunday even more. And help us remember Christ's sacrifice. And if he can give up his life for us, I can give up a part of my life for him. And I think the 40 days of fasting make the feast even more beautiful. And that scene that Christ died for me when I had no reason, he had no reason to die for me. It's beautiful. And I think all Christians should celebrate this and practice Lent. Because it's not just looking at today, it's looking at the future, and it's anticipating Jesus breaking out of the grave, which I think is a beautiful thing. So that's my thoughts on Lent. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you guys can take some of the words I gave and use those in your life and kind of maybe apply them. Maybe it's not too late to give up something for Lent. I mean, I don't, there's not really, you know, 
a do by date, but I think if you haven't, maybe think about something you can give up or find a way where you can encounter God more, think about his sacrifice. Because Easter's coming, it's a month away now, so I'm excited for it, I'm getting really excited for it.